Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, uh, we're having that same, we might have to manually let it do something again on the, my phone isn't connecting. Or if not, I'll just. Um, have you ever lost something important this spring? Unfortunately, on a busy weekend, I lost my keys to the church. And I kind of needed those keys. When I lost them, it was a busy weekend, and there was a Saturday lunch. Pastor Samuel Camisa was meeting with the elders. The youth needed to get into the, the shed to mow the lawn. And of course, there was church on Sunday. I had to borrow different keys, make calls and texts, and spend a lot of time to ensure everything still got taken care of. I needed to find those keys. Eventually, I realized I had lost them while I was working outside building some garden fences. So I got down on my hands and knees, looking inside, looking outside, searching high and low for those keys. When I found them, I was elated. I let out a big sigh of relief and said, thank you, Lord. When we lose important things, it's such a relief to find them. And uh, either I'm harebrained or the Lord has a sense of humor or a little bit of both, but this morning I drove into church and realized I had the wrong set of keys with me. And I had taken my wife's keys, so I had to drive back and bring her her keys because she would not have liked them if I had lost her keys. If it's something that's not very important to you, you might not notice that it's gone. If you lost a book you've never read, nah, it might take you years before you miss it. If you lost a tool or a toy that you rarely use, it probably wouldn't bother you that much. But when you lose something important, you miss it. Well, today's parable is the story about a shepherd who has lost his sheep. The man had a flock of 100 sheep. However, one of the sheep went missing. And when the shepherd noticed that a sheep was missing, he left the 99 in the open country and goes off in search of the missing sheep. This missing sheep is obviously important to the shepherd. In fact, when he finds the sheep, he rejoices. He is so excited that he invites others to rejoice with him, and they celebrate it together. The reason we're told Jesus told this parable is because the Pharisees were grumbling that Jesus received sinners and ate with them. They didn't like the, those people. So instead of being happy that they were part of God's kingdom, they grumbled. They complained about the sins and mistakes of the people Jesus was talking to. They gossiped about the terrible things they had done. They mocked Jesus for spending time with them. But Jesus told them uh, this parable to let them in on a little secret. God was not grumbling or judging or mocking. God was rejoicing that sinners were repentant or repenting. You see, he was looking to restore the lost sheep. The people that Jesus was eating with and spending time with, this in, in this case, had clearly been in the wrong. Jesus doesn't deny that they had done things they shouldn't have. However, God is not looking to weed out the bad apples. Instead, he is looking to bring back those who have wandered away. Um, some parables, we have to think really hard to figure out what they mean. But not this parable. Jesus tells us the meaning. Jesus says, just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 persons who need no repentance. In order to make sure we truly understand and get the point, Jesus tells a second parable that is very, very similar. A woman loses one of ten coins. Now, these coins um, 
were more valuable than quarters. We're talking they didn't have you know, lots of bills and notes. It seems as if it was likely that each coin was roughly equivalent to the value of one sheep. So this woman also searches high and low, cleaning her house, because that's often the best way to find something that is lost. And when she finds it, she throws a party. She invites her friends and her neighbors to party with her. And Jesus once again tells us the moral of the story so there's no confusion. Jesus says, just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Jesus is searching. Jesus is searching for sinners who repent. And when he finds them, he brings these sinners back home, back to God the Father. And he rejoices and all of heaven with him. You know, it's so easy for us to think like the Pharisees. We often think that there are good people and bad people in this world. And if we don't like someone, we often start blaming them, well, for everything. When we have disagreements, we sometimes treat other people as the enemy. However, Jesus didn't think this way. This shepherd, Jesus, the good shepherd, is a shepherd that searches. Jesus is not, in other words, trying to condemn us. He's trying to rescue us. Jesus does not want to destroy sinners. He's calling them to repent instead of indulging in sinful selfishness. Instead of loving to hate, he teaches us to simply love. Jesus is searching. He is active. He is working. He, Jesus is looking. He is striving to save lost sheep. There have probably been times when you were lost in life. Uh, when I was new to Cincinnati, I got lost several times. Maybe when a spouse or friend or family member died, it felt not like you had lost them. You simply felt lost. We get lost when we sin, when we lose control and do things we should not have done, things that hurt others. We've all been lost. We get lost at various times in this life. We've all gotten lost in sin, in hatred, in selfishness in our lives, caught up in the, that wickedness and and caught up in, in things that feel good even though we know they're wrong. However, the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, has laid down his life for you. Jesus lifted you up and carried you back. He forgives and restores us through his cross and resurrection. And that is a good reason to rejoice. You know, we don't have to speak the same language in order to celebrate God's grace, which is why uh, we celebrate with uh, the Aromo congregation, because God has made us one church. We are united by forgiveness, united by our Savior. We all admit our sin, and we all are forgiven by Jesus, who restores us. You and I, we are the sheep of the Good Shepherd. Not because we've done anything so right, but simply because Jesus, the Good Shepherd, sought us out. By grace, we have been saved because God found us when we were lost. And when he found us and when we had repented, he rejoiced. He was not waiting over us, to look, waiting to tell us what we'd done wrong and and give us what for? No. He rejoiced, and all of heaven was rejoicing with him when you repented. When we repent, remember, heaven rejoices. And as Jesus' people, we too rejoice when sinners repent. We're not looking to attack or hate or belittle 
although we, you know, we need boundaries, we need the law, God's law, to show us our sin, that's not what we're really excited about. We're excited when the lost sheep are found. Just like Jesus who searches for repentance and rejoices when he finds it, we too want to encourage repentance. We practice repentance, admitting our sins every Sunday and hopefully more often than that as well. And we are committed to teaching our children and grandchildren and fellow uh, church members, especially our little ones, to humbly admit mistakes and sins, and we forgive them and teach them to rejoice in God's forgiveness through Christ. And that's why, among other reasons, it's a joy to be here with one another today. Because it's not only heaven that rejoices over sinners who repent. We rejoice. We, you, for instance, you can rejoice that I have repented, and I can rejoice that you have repented. We rejoice and sing because Jesus continues to forgive sinners who repent. We rejoice together. In Jesus' name, amen.